And so there you have it, one RB30 block, sitting here in the corner, awaiting the results of measurement. Hey guys, what's going on? This video today is gonna to be one of the most detailed uh, sort of technical videos that I've done to date on this channel. This is gonna be a really good look at stripping down an RB30 block, removing pistons, rods, crank, girdle, uh, all that sort of stuff so that I can measure and check everything before making a decision about where to go with the block. You know, do I buy a full forged kit to rebuild it or can I reuse some of these parts? I don't know. So the only way to figure that out is to pull everything apart and measure it. So let's dive right in and have a look. Right, so here's the block. So I'm gonna start with the first thing I can think of, and that is to get the big crank nut off there. Hey. There you go. So there you go, that was pretty easy. What I did was I got a couple of bolts into where the flywheel uh, goes, into the back of the motor, and just kind of locked up a spanner in there so that as I rotated the crank up this way, that spanner got locked against the edge of the uh, engine sand barrel there. And so then that stopped the, uh, the nut from rotating further. Well, that stopped the crank from rotating so that when I put um, you know a fair bit of force on the actual nut, going that way, it would actually unlock from the um, from the thread. So there we go. Boom. All right, so now the crank bolt is out. Um, I'm just gonna put it back in a little bit, almost all the way in, but I'm just gonna leave a couple of millimeters so that when I put my pulley on it, pulley on it? So when I put my pulley puller on it, um, the balancer itself will have a little bit of uh, room to move this way and then I guess I'll kind of readjust it again after that point and slowly um, be able to tighten the puller and move the balancer this way on the shaft All right, so I repositioned the puller around the the very uh, back uh, part of the balancer just because it seems like it's the thickest part and the actual uh, blade, I don't know, the little flat parts on the edge of the puller um, will actually grab on that properly sort of thing. So let's give it a go. There we go, that balancer is free. And so each, uh, each time I'm turning the puller now, you can see this gap's getting bigger and bigger. So that's cool. That balancer is coming off. There's a bit of resistance there now because I think that's actually, that's now hitting uh, the crank nut in here. So I've got to probably take this off. Then I'll loosen this nut out a little bit further and I'll do this, this whole process again. Oh, look at that. He's pretty free. So now I'm pretty hopeful. I should just be able to, just with my hands, pull the balancer off the rest of the way. Big ass washer. There you go. One harmonic balancer removed. Now that I've got the balancer off, it means I can remove um, the lower timing cover. This whole thing there. You can remove the bolts with the balancer in place, but you can't actually remove the timing cover um, until you remove the balancer. So it turns out I've got to remove this pulley before I can get the timing cover off. I don't know, there might be a way to do it and leave the pulley on there, but I don't know if, if it is possible. So I'm just gonna take it off anyway. All right, so now that the balancer is off and this pulley's out of the way, I can take off the lower timing cover and have a ooh. Oh, that's nasty. Huh. That's... <laughs> Not what I was wanting to see. That's the timing bell off. Take them down the bin. Beautiful. 
So gross. <laughs> Jesus. All right, so next thing is to remove this tensioner. Looks like uh, there's one 14 millimeter bolt on there. Should be pretty easy. is so gross. Okay, so now that that tension is out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and remove these uh, 12 millimeter bolts holding the water pump on. And yeah, I should be able to take the whole water pump off that way then. So now these bolts are out, uh, but it looks like there's also about three or four uh, 14 millimeter bolts um, holding this bracket on and the underside of the pump here. Yeah, big daddy. So that looks like everything. I don't know what to do, do I just pull it? Oh, ah, yuck. So the short answer is yes, you just pull it. And I'm covered in brown sludge, that's awesome. I'm gonna go and remove this uh, coolant pipe and the thermostat housing from this side. I can still see the thermostat inside there, so we'll go ahead and pull that all out as well. Might just have to cut that. Dude. Ooh. So it just looks like three 12 millimeter bolts. This is pretty straightforward. If you've ever had to replace the thermostat, this just comes right off. Oh, what the f So gross. <laughs> there we go. One, <laughs> what looks to be original RB30 thermostat. All right, so Removing the crank timing gear, I've heard, can be a bit of a problem. Um, I'm going to try the most straightforward method first, which is the idea is that you get a couple of flat blades in behind it at different points and try to lever it this way off the crank. Um, if that doesn't work, I'm going to have to drill it um, and cut it and split it and pull it off in two parts and get a new one. Alrighty, so I've made a little bit of progress with the crank timing gear. I'm going slowly because from everything that I've read, you don't want to force this off uh, at risk of potentially damaging the crank or something like that. But what I have done, I have managed to get it freed up a little bit. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but it's, it's definitely got a couple of millimeters from where it was when I first started playing with it. And that was just by gently tapping the screwdriver down here and the other side over here, just a little bit, just gently, and then taking it out and then I put a wrench on the, uh, like where the flywheel bolts to, and I turned the motor over about a quarter of a turn. And I did the same thing here and here again. And then I turned it over again a little bit more. And I'm just kind of slowly working my way around the whole revolution. And I think I'm making progress. I'm just trying to go slowly and I'm trying to go, you know, evenly um, around it. You know, that's, that's why I'm turning it over is so that I can keep applying the force um, you know, pretty much the same all around so that I'm not just kind of driving the gear down, down, down and potentially, you know, gouging the crank or whatever. And then I'll take them out. I'll turn the motor over again a little bit more and I'll do the same. Oh yeah? So part of the problem is that this is all just kind of rusty. 
So I think even as I'm pulling on it, it's kind of getting, it's kind of binding on this, this extra little half a millimeter or whatever it is that's coating the crank. It's just like, it's just like corrosion. I mean, that's as far as I can get in. That's actually the screwdriver's just lightly resting on the crank as it is. All right, so I've got this smaller puller on there now. And um, yeah, this, this smaller puller seems to be doing the job. It seems to be working. So I think that's, that's a Woodruff key there, but I'm not sure what this little sliver is there. So there you go, that's the uh, crank timing gear. That came off uh, yeah, really quite easily with the right tool. So there we go, that's all the 10 mil bolts all the way around. Uh, the sump, taken off. Uh, I'll go put those in a bag so I don't lose them and then we'll try and take the sump off. Oh, yes. Well, there we go. All right, so the uh, paint scraper in there to break the seal seems to have done the trick. Um, I really just had to do this one corner and then the whole thing just kind of kind of gave way a little bit, which is cool. So we're not too far away from having the sump off. All right, so we've got the sump off. You can see in there, to my untrained eyes, everything looks pretty good. I've jiggled everything that I could and there's no like movement in anything, which is, I guess, a good sign. I mean, like I said, I'm gonna be replacing and, and rebuilding uh, most of the stuff in here. So it doesn't really matter if there was a bit of play and, and all that sort of stuff, but it's still, uh, it's nice to see that it's in pretty good condition. So next is gonna be the, uh, the oil pickup. which looks pretty clean. That's cool, there's no like, oh, there's, there's a couple of little metal chunks there. Woo-wee! Don't know if you can really see that, but yeah, there's a little bit of a metal chunk on the, on the oil pickup. So once the pickup's out of the way, then I'll undo the girdle and take that out as well. There you go, oil pickup is off. All right, so when it comes to installing the girdle, um, these bolts have to be done, done up in a specific order from uh, center to the outside. So you go center, then, you know, uh, that one, then 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 that one. So I don't know if it's important to do it in the reverse order, but I'm going to do it just so I don't accidentally stress something or, or mess something up. So I'm going to start from the outsides first and then I'm going to work my way 
inwards and end on the, the center set of bolts. Alright, so that's all the bolts cracked. Now I'm going to go ahead and actually undo them and take them out. Um, I guess now is probably a good time to take off the engine mounts. Um, I don't know why I haven't <laughs> up to this point, but yeah, they've got to come off anyway. So there's just four bolts holding these mounts on. It's pretty straightforward. 14 millimeters. Right, right now it looks like it's time for the oil pump to come off. So it looks like it's a bunch of uh, 10 millimeter bolts. Uh, around the outside of this uh, section and then this whole uh, oil pump section should just uh, pull off the bottom of the block. So there's a couple of different size uh, bolts holding this oil pump on. So it's a really good idea to kind of keep track of what goes where. This is like a medium size one. There's another one of those medium size ones there too. On the outside edge here, those two. So it sort of looks like these two top ones will be like the longest, like that length. Then there's these two medium ones here. And then the rest of them, I think, are going to be like the really short ones. Well, there you go. That's the oil pump uh, basically removed as such. There's nothing holding it on other than the little um, this washer on the crank. So here you can see the infamous RV oil pump drive method. It's just got these two little lobes. If you can see it there, you can just see at the top and bottom there, these tiny little lobes that are driven by matching tiny little divots on the snout here of the crank. It's not much contact area and there's only two of them, one on each side. That's what spins the gears in the oil pump. And that's what most people, including myself, replace when building an RV. So, yeah, I mean, look at that. That's, it's tiny. It's so tiny. All right, so now that the oil pump's off, uh, it's time to take the, uh, I don't know what it's called, the rear retainer uh, off this end of the engine. And then, um, then that's everything that holds the crank in place. Then it's going to be a matter of taking the uh, con rods and pistons out through the top of the motor. And yeah, that should basically be everything uh, ready to pull straight out. So let's have a look at this uh, rear retainer. It's a bit dark here at the moment, but it's basically the same as the oil pump. It seems to be a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts all the way around. Uh, the only problem is that the motor's been suspended by the engine stand at this end at the moment as well. So it's going to be tricky to get a spanner in there, but I think I can do it. That looks like pretty much all the bolts. So hopefully it's just a case of loosening these out. I think, I think this whole retainer should slide out this way. One crank rear retainer, so that's the rear main seal. Actually, <laughs> seems like it was in 
half decent condition. <laughs> All right, so now I think we're just down to rods and pistons to come out. You know, we've got everything else off. We've got the oil pump up the front, rear crank retainer uh, off the back. So now all that's left is um, to undo these uh, rods and then drop the pistons out the top of the motor, which is the bottom at the moment. And then I think that's everything done. There you go, one RB30 piston and rod. <sighs> now it's got to do that five more times. So this was the rustiest one and like to me, to my untrained eye, it actually like looks okay, it just looks like surface sludgy build up. Like maybe that'll clean up alright, I don't know. Man those bores look perfect. Here's the other rusty one. Again, it just looks like just sludgy buildup. Like you can still see like the the perfect metal underneath it. Well, there you go, guys. That's the uh, RB30 completely torn down. A couple little bits and pieces. That'll just take a, a couple of minutes, but. You know, for the most part, that's everything done. Um, I'm happy to pull that off the stand now and um, have a talk to the machine shop, have a talk to a couple of guys and, um, you know, start thinking about ordering some parts for it. And so there you go, guys, sitting on the bench behind me. We have a set of rods and pistons. Where are they? <laughs> we have a set of rods and pistons. I've got the crank all wrapped up. We've got the, I've got the girdle all wrapped up here. And so now we're just going to wait for my friend uh, to come around with his measuring tools and uh, measure it all up. Tell me what's good, tell me what I can reuse, tell me what I'll need to buy new and you know what machining that I might need to get done to the block and all that sort of stuff. So as always guys, thanks so much for watching this. It really does mean a lot. Make sure you check us out on Facebook and Instagram and uh, yeah, hopefully see you guys out on meet soon and hopefully we'll have this 30 build done sooner rather than later as well. See you soon.